hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, a review of the Jessam Master Lift Excel 2 router table. Now it's been some time since I purchased this router table and I've had some time to put it through its paces and see what I think. And a lot of you have been asking about it. So I thought it's a great time to put out a review of this product, but it will not only be for the Master Lift 2 uh, and the table, it will also be the digital readout as well as the miter slide and of course, the PowerTech uh, Jessam router motor. Uh, we'll package it all into one show, so I'm gonna shut up now because we've got a lot to cover. Let's head over to the router table. What I'm gonna start off with is the fence. This is the Master Fence 2. It is model number 04010 from Jessam, and at first, I have to say I was skeptical about this fence because of its external mounted tracks. That's how this thing works. It runs on tracks outside the table. But the more that I worked with it, the more I actually love that feature because it doesn't take up any room inside. Um, my old table had holes that, you know, you could adjust this takes up no table room. There's no other obstructions in the table itself. And it's held down and locked in place by two threaded, um, and not really rods, but knobs on this side. And it, it slides rather easily to whatever uh, setting you want to put it at. And once you get it set where you like, it locks down just as easily. I love how solidly it locks down. Another feature of this fence is that on the sides are these rulers here and they also have lock knobs underneath and you can adjust them to, to dial them in or calibrate them to whatever you like. And they also seem to be right on the money. I'll just give you a little picture of those here and I'll hold it up to a trusted ruler there that I have. You can see that they're, they are right on and uh, you know what, they've come in handy several times. So that brings me to talk about the table itself. Phenolic resin black, it is one heck of a strong material. It takes a licking and keeps on going sort of thing. Um, it's gotten m many, many hours of use uh, with it at the moment and it looks pretty much like the day it was bought. There's hardly any scratches in it. Now there are a few, but that happens when you use a tool. As far as flatness goes, the table is dead flat. You check it corner to corner with a straight edge and there is no variation. That is the great thing about the resin table. So uh, a lot of the tables are a particle board uh, with a laminate or an MDF, a rather thick MDF. And those ones are okay too. I had one of those that lasted me for years and I enjoy using it. But I have to say this thinner uh, resin material is Oh, it, it's a, a, a far cry from my old uh, old setup and it is a much higher quality and honestly it's uh, I, I, I love the table as well and the material that it's made out of. Well now going back to the fence and the split fence here I have heard some reports of guys saying that they had quite a difference in distance between the in-feed and the out-feed side of the table. And I honestly don't have that problem. I don't see that here. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe you're tightening your bolts that hold it in place down a little too tight and you're ended up warping that table a little bit or the, the out-feed side. Um, adjustability of these openings. Now you can see the bolts here that hold it in place into the front, but that is not the only way to adjust it. And in fact, I rarely use that, even though they provide you with a wrench to do that, there are uh, jig knobs on the back end of the fence. It just takes a little bit of a twist 
and you can very easily slide that fence to whatever you wish. Um, it very handy, very easy. You can slide it and then a quick little lockdown and away you go. It's fast, it's easy, and you know what? It's, it's just another really good feature of the fence itself. Well, while we're on the topic of the fence, one of my favorite features about it is the fact that it has T-tracks on both top and front surfaces. This allows a lot of versatility as far as both uh, commercially available things like stops and hold downs uh, right down to your shop made jigs like possibly a shop made stop block. So I'll just slide this blade guard across here and this is one of the store bought stop blocks and it installs quite easily wherever you want has a knurled metal knob there to tighten it down and because of that t-track there it really is solid that mounts there on the top and i love that feature but as well these hold downs that are here or it's basically jessam's version of a feather board they fit rather well into the T-track that is in the front of the fence. And basically, they just slide in here like this, line up pressure down on your wood, you lock them into place, and away they go. They're directional, and they work rather well at not only holding down your stock, but also forcing it into the fence. Well, now the miter slide was an add-on accessory to the fence. Um, I have to admit it is one of those accessories that I honestly don't use very often, but the times that I have used it, it has worked flawlessly. It slides incredibly smoothly along this piston here, and when you're done with it or not using it, it slides to the end and tilts all the way back and sits in a cradle well out of the way. I will say that while you are using the miter slide, you cannot use anything in this front face uh, T-track because of course the rail that it runs on slides directly through that T-track sort of thing. Setup and calibration was an absolute pain in the butt because there are so many factors that change whether or not um, it's true, like whether or not it runs square and flat to the table. So it was a just check, a just check. And you guys may have picked up on the frustration of that during the installation video or the assembly video. But once it was all said and done, I was glad that I purchased it and I was glad that I had it because as I said, the times that I have used it, it's worked flawlessly. Okay, so the miter slide has on its fence here marks from 0 to 45 left and right. Um, there are positive stops every 5 degrees. Here, I'll let you hear those. Hear that? Those are the positive stops at each 5 degree increment. It also has a smaller adjustable scale here with single degree increments from zero to five so that you can get it dialed in in any combination in between your positive stops. So just to test it here, I've got a digital protractor all over there that's already been zeroed out. We're gonna slide this around to 45 degrees, just like that. It's got a great, very heavy duty handle and, and tightening knob here. And we will just go over here and see what our protractor says we're at. Put it right in the corner there. And there we go, 45 degrees right on the money. No fussing around, no screwing around with it. It was pretty much right from the bat. Now I have not done anything with the calibration with this since the first day I set it up and it still held true. So it's, uh, it's an excellent fence system and if a miter fence is something that you are interested in for your router table. Um, although this one does have a nice little price tag with it, it is a well-built quality unit, works flawlessly, and uh, I, I guarantee you, you're going to love it just as much as what I do. 
Now here is a feature that a lot of you have been asking about and that would be the digital readout. Um, how do I like the digital readout? Actually, I love it. I think it's fantastic. And when I'm trying to dial in a measurement on the router table and trying to get it right on, this thing has saved my butt more times than once. However, um, I don't like the way that it's mounted on the unit. In order to get a good clear view of it, you need to be straight on and be able to look straight onto it and get a good clear view. Um, the problem is the mounting bracket is low. Um, so in order to use it, mount it the way that it's supposed to be mounted, this miter fence interferes. You can see that there isn't much clearance here between these two. If I put this thing down where it's supposed to be, the miter fence actually strikes this and I can't have it tilted up to read it. It has to be flat. So then I have to get down on its level to be able to read it. It is actually only mounted with two of the four bolts that it should be mounted with and it's raised up only with two mounting holes. That way I can clear this, tilt the readout so that I can get a good clear uh, view of it and not have to bend down so much. As far as it, its accuracy, it seems to be thus far fantastic. As you raise the bit, it it will give you the decimal number of the inches or millimeters that you are measuring in. If you are in imperial measures, once it gets to a fraction, it will display that fraction. But we will slowly raise it up and you can see that we are at 0 0.089, 0 0.9, there you go. Now we're at 3 30 seconds of an inch. And a little way past that, we'll go again, just slowly, slowly. Where's our next inch commit? There we go, there's one eighth, which is actually 0.125. So <clears throat> this is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty darn cool and works really well. However, it's only as good as what you zero it out to be. So if you have a cutter installed in your router and you are off on your initial zero out, zeroing out of the unit, in other words, you raise or lower that bit until it's flush with the table, use a straight edge to check it, then you zero out your meter. If you are off a little bit, so is every single measurement that you do from there. Now, some of the Jessam router lifts have a crank that is up on the very top of the table. And you have a crank arm that is put in place up here and you rotate it. And then they have micro adjusts and all that. This one is a little different. This one has a large crank wheel here on the side and it is smooth as silk. The mechanism that operates this lift is unbelievably smooth. I mean, there is no resistance, there is no friction, there is nothing here that makes you think, oh my goodness, this feels cheesy. This is a solidly built unit that works flawlessly. And once you get the table to where you want, it has a lock lever. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here. And all you do is just lift up, lock it in place. That is now solidly locked in there. You cannot move it, you cannot shift it. Um, I'm sure that if I wanted to grab it by the crank handle and give it a good pull, I could probably release the brake. But why would you want to do that, really? Um, it's very easy to tell as soon as you go to move it that it is locked in place. So there's not really a worry of stripping this out. You are aware immediately that this is locked. And to unlock it, to make an adjustment, a quick little, just with, look, one finger. One thumb down and then one finger up. Down, you're unlocked. And then you can make your adjustment watching your digital gauge if you went that route and then lock it in place and you're done. It has been an absolute joy to use this lift. My other router table had an aftermarket one that I installed with that crank. And as much as I liked it, the reason I went with this setup 
is because I was forever getting dust, sawdust stuck in the crank and you know, you'd have to clean it out, vacuum it out before you use it. And it just became a real sort of pain. This has never been an issue. There's never been a time that this was ever unusable. It's never been a time that I've had to clean it out before I used it. Accessibility is phenomenal here on the outside of the table. I don't have a separate tool that I have to jam into here and use another one to lock it down. I don't have any of that. I have something that is built into the table, rock solid and works fantastically. What more could you ask for in a lift? Well, at this point in time, I'm just going to bring you under the router table to show you basically the heart and soul of this table. And that would be the PowerTech uh, Jessam router. It's a model 05200. This thing here runs from 10,000 to 21,000 RPM. It's a three and a horse, or th sorry, three and a quarter horsepower motor. And honest to goodness, it makes my other router motors look like they were made by Fisher Price. This thing is a behemoth. It's a soft start motor, which I really like. You don't get that bang as it kicks in right away, but I love the adjustability. Um, this motor was made for this table and therefore fit and finish is bang on. You don't have to worry about how well or how poorly it fits in here. While I have you under the table, you can see this is the mechanism here that does all the smooth lifting. Um, that is the gearbox of our router lift. Um, but let's have a look at the speed control for this motor um, because it's pretty cool in its own right. Well, this is the digital speed control for the router motor and it claims that it is from 10,000 to 21,000 RPM. So we'll start it off here. I'll put it at its lowest setting. We'll see how it rates on our digital readout here. And then I'll crank it up to its highest setting and see how close we get to 21,000. Well, as you saw there, while we never quite got as low as 10,000, we sure didn't stop at 21,000 either. We were up and around close to 24,000. Now, I do not have the equipment to test and verify the RPM or the accuracy of its readout. Um, however, uh, you know, you are at the mercy now of this readout and what it gives you, but it does give you a great indication for your different size bits as to what you should be running at and what your machine is actually running at. So instead of referencing a chart where if you have your router on speed six, it's this many RPMs. Now you have a digital readout that can give you immediate response and tell you what it is that you're running at. So this is a great feature. I love it. And I use that one constantly. So on the same note with the router, the router comes with two chucks. You got a quarter inch and a half inch. Um, both of them are quite solid. They fit well, they tighten well. They are a, um, I'm not sure if this is the correct term, but they're like a double locking collet where you tighten it down, but when you loosen it, you'll get that first crack, it'll go loose, but the bit won't come out and then you've got to loosen it one more time to get it out. Um, it is a double wrench system and it comes with these two offset wrenches in order to work on your collet. And normally I'm not a fan of wrench setups. I don't like the double wrench. I prefer a single wrench system but I decided I would give this a go and man, am I glad that I did because I absolutely love the way that this sets up. What I like to do is I like to lower the table or sorry, the lift so that when I drop a wrench in here, it is able to sit flat on the table just like that. And once it's flat on the table, whatever call it I have in place, I can easily just hold this wrench with my one hand and 
take this one here and crack it loose and away I go. I've never had an issue. You never feel like the wrenches are cheesy and gonna give way. They're rock solid, they feel great, they work great, and they're a fantastic addition to this router motor. So here is one of the most unused pieces of router table equipment in the history of router tables. And the one that is provided with the Jessam Masterlift Excel 2 table is absolutely spectacular. I love its setup and that is a starter pin. Um, all of the other starter pins that I've ever used have been compression fit, you just push them in. But this one here is a threaded system and it threads in with a nice little knurled top there. It fits securely. You don't have to worry about it popping up or shifting. It's rock solid and it works really, really well. Um, for those of you who do use your router starting pins, if you have an opportunity to get a table like this, you are going to love this pin. Um, it's, it's really well made, it's really well designed, and it's, well, you know what, it may be a small little feature, but it's a great one. Well, the one thing that I love about this router table is the fact that it does not have a router plate. Um, the router lift, everything is built right into the table. There's been too many times when you get a router table that has a plate that the table ends up warping or it's misaligned on the tabletop surface and you end up bumping into it or it causes problems. Um, this thing is great because it does not have that issue, but it does have, and I have a full set of these router inserts and you can get the set that come in all different sizes depending on what it is that you want to route. Um, you, the sets are fairly inexpensive, but they insert with this wrench. Now, I would like to see this, that it holds this in place, but it doesn't. It would be nice if you could snap this wrench in place, unlock it and lift it out with this wrench, but it doesn't, I'm holding this here. It does not stay in place. I can do this till the cows come home and it's not gonna do anything. So these just sit in place and in order to lock it down, it's a counterclockwise movement, just like that. It's a simple little counterclockwise movement. And then to unlock it, it's a clockwise. Now that is unlocked, but how do you get it out? Especially if there's a router bit there. Well, I've overcome that little issue just by simply unlocking the lift and carefully raising it up until it's a little above the table and then I can take it away. Now I would like to have seen it so that, you know, it held on to the router insert itself. And I may look at maybe a little bit of heat shrink on these pins here so that uh, the rubber of the heat shrink can, you know, give it a better grip to be able to pull it out with. I don't know, I'll, I'll come up with something, but uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a minor irritation, but and a little bit of an irritation nonetheless. Well, for the most part on the router table, uh, the review from me has been positive. There's been a few little minor things, but mostly positive. Now, if you remember from the assembly, this router table came with a four inch dust port that went up underneath and kind of had like a half moon assembly that was supposed to suck dust away from the router bit when you're doing things uh, like, like basically a, uh, a dado or that sort of thing. The fence itself has an attachment for your shop vac and that works quite well provided that you have the split fence set properly and you're doing the proper type of routing. If you're doing something on the edge of a board up against the fence, it's, you know, with router or sorry, bearing guided, then this takes it away quite well. But doing something like a dado, there's quite a bit of dust underneath the table that's created. So how does that shroud work? Well, my initial thoughts on the shroud were that it didn't work very well. And then uh, I did some more testing and it turns out that it's not that it didn't work very well, it's that my cabinet is not enclosed and a lot of the dust that I was seeing down below was not created um, from dust that was flying out of the router table. It was actually shooting off the end of the router table and then floating down underneath. So the dust shroud 
underneath the table actually does a half decent job considering that we're messing around with a three and a quarter horsepower motor that blows a lot of crap around that four inch kind of half moon port does a pretty good job at containing the dust so let's run a little test i've got a three quarter inch straight bit in here we're going to run a couple dados in a scrap piece of pine uh, probably about three-eighths of an inch deep. We'll run it through twice and film underneath and let's just see how much dust is really flying around down there. So as you saw, considering what we're dealing with, it actually did a half decent job. It probably got 80 plus percent, maybe even closer to 90 percent of the dust. There's still going to be some down there in the table, but you know what? That's going to happen no matter what router table you've got. And that will improve once this router table is enclosed, which I will be doing on the show here at some point in time. So there you go. That's the dust collection underneath the table. Well, I guess the final point that I want to touch on for this router table is price point. Um, I bought my original Freud router table and fence many, many years ago uh, for the price of about 200 and some odd dollars. And I struggled with having to pay that much for a router table. The Jessam Masterlift Excel 2, I'm not going to get into how much, but I'm going to tell you that this thing is big bucks. You are not going to get away with this router table cheaply, especially if you've done like I have and added the accessories, being the uh, Jessam stop blocks, the the guides, the hold downs, and the their version of the feather board. Uh, I added the miter slide, I added the digital readout, and I added the PowerTech Jessam three and a quarter horsepower motor with that digital uh, readout and that sort of thing. Guys, this thing is big bucks. Don't kid yourself. But really, uh, you know what? I, I don't regret spending a dime. I have loved everything about this router table once I got the chance to familiarize myself with it and put it to good use. So is it expensive? Yeah, it is expensive. Um, but does it make my old one look like something out of the dollar store yeah it pretty much does that as well and there you have it the review of the jessam master excel 2 lift table router motor uh digital readout yada 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 guys i have had a great opportunity to put this thing through its paces and to do everything from lock miter bits to some raised panels, uh, the larger bits right down to smaller dados, um, and some free work, uh, you know, routing edges and roundovers and that sort of thing, as well as some powder uh, pattern routing. And everything that I have put this thing through, it has taken with no problems, and I've never had an issue. Um, it took a bit of a while to get used to the fence. It slides nice and easily, provided that you don't loosen off those knobs too much. If you loosen those knobs off too much and you go to slide it, the bolt inside the track likes to jam itself against the track. That's the nature of the beast. You can't help that. That would happen if it was Jessam or any other brand of router table. You only need to loosen it off a little bit, but that was the learning curve. Every tool has a learning curve, and as long as you take the time to adjust yourself to it, well, that's what learning how to use a tool is all about. So what is the bottom line here? What would I rate this router table? Now, I'm talking the whole package, the, the miter slide, the fence, the motor, the whole bit. What would I rate it out of 10? Remind you, no, pool, no, no tool is perfect. Absolutely no tool is perfect, but I'd give this one a 9. Um, there is very little about this machine that ticks me off. There is very little about it that aggravates me. There is very little about it that I think, man, I wish that was set up differently. The one little minor point that I wish it was set up differently was the height of that digital gauge. I'm six feet, two inches tall. So 
I'm looking down at this table. Now I need that readout tilted a certain way and the original setup was not geared for that. So I made an adjustment. I took two bolts out, I raised it up. Instead of mounting it on four bolts, I mounted it on two and it worked out beautifully. I've never had a problem with it. There's still plenty of cord running down from the gauge down to the sensor. It's no problem. Guys, this table is built rock solid. The assembly of it, everything, the fit, the finish, I never had a single issue putting anything together. I never had to file a hole out. I never had to adjust. I never had to shift. I never had to struggle to get a bolt in. Everything fit where it was supposed to fit. The only problem I had in the assembly of the thing was the fact that that phenolic resin is so hard that it was really difficult to crank those screws into it. But you know what, a little bit of elbow grease got it in there and it wasn't a problem. <laughs> Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's show. I know there's been a lot of uh, questions about this router table as far as how I like it, but I didn't want to put out a review of it until I had a chance to really give it a workout. If there's something that I did not cover in today's show that you want to know about, please do not be shy. Drop me a link down or a message down below. Uh, if, if you're a long time viewer or a short time viewer of this show, hopefully you've noticed that I answer every single comment. So if you have a question, drop it below and I will answer you one way or the other. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show this week. I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope it's answered some of your questions about this router table and its functions and, and whether or not it's really worth that high price point that it comes with. Um, me personally, I don't regret a moment at all. I don't regret it for a moment that I paid that kind of money for a Canadian made router table like this and uh, the quality is definitely there. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in this week, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.